Morning, guys. Good to see you all. Seeing quite a few of us tuned in already. Um, we're just starting and we've got 19 viewers already. So thank you for tuning in, guys. Um, plan for today. I'm going to talk uh, just about a couple of wee admin things like we usually do. Um, following that, uh, we're going to mainly look at letter writing today. I'm just noticing that the green screen is going a little bit funny around the edges of my head today. I apologize about that, but you know, it can't go right all the time. Um, but yeah, good to see you. Who, uh, who have we got on? We've got uh, Karina, Freddie, Zach. Um, I think that's, uh, is that Callum there? Sam, Isa, good to see everyone. Liam as well, Emily, Freya, excellent. Right, lots of us here, which is fantastic to see. Um, so very quickly, uh, since uh, since the camera seems to be uh, going so funny, I'm going to try and get off this big screen uh, quite quickly. Um, however, you, you you should notice in the background, uh, I, I I'm obviously in a different time zone to you because it's it dark where we are, uh, and if you've watched this morning's video, um, you should have an idea of why there are different time zones. Uh, now, again, this is stuff that you should kind of have had an idea of already, but obviously, we've, we, as we learned in the video, all planets have uh, different day and night cycles because of how fast they spin. If you haven't watched that video yet, um, then that is going to be part of your, um, part of your learning for today, basically. Um, so go and watch that video. It's on space. It was just something I knocked up quickly last night. Um, a couple of you saying that you didn't watch it already. That's absolutely fine, but you'll um, you'll, you'll get a chance to do that later. Um, but it's uh, just a quick video, but it explains why we have um, day and night cycles. Um, now, the uh, I'm, I'm, there was a bit of a problem with maths. Uh, I've now changed that. Um, so the maths I'd accidentally put up Wednesday of last week's maths which was incorrect, I should now have updated that. So I'm seeing uh, some people saying uh, the maths on P6C is still old. It shouldn't be. There should now be a new file up. I'm going to go check again just now. I'll just get it up on, on my laptop here. Um, but all classes had the wrong maths. I've updated it as of about 20 minutes ago. Um, I think in the case of P6C, someone still had the original file open so I couldn't delete the original one and so I just had to insert the new one alongside it. Uh, so if you've been worried about maths and you're thinking um, that the maths is wrong, you should, let me just double check this now, I'm hoping, yeah there we go, there, 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 is, there is now an updated maths for today. Okay, so go and check on that later. Uh, and it's all just coordinate stuff. You're playing uh, battleships again for one of the activities, I think, if memory serves me, uh, which is just the same as last week's battleships, except you're using coordinates instead of grid references. Um, now, um, for my class, I'm meeting two of the groups today. Um, we will do Parvana's Journey first, and that will be at 10.40. So Parvana's journey at 10.40 today, so pretty much straight after this live stream, uh, we'll be going on and we'll be meeting the Parvana's journey group. Uh, and then lastly, Windscape, I'll be meeting you guys at 11 o'clock. Uh, so 11 o'clock, Windscape, we'll chat about things there. So if you can get on uh, to Teams in time for that, we can go over a couple of things there. Uh, why is it always letter writing, someone's asking? I don't think I've done a live stream on letter writing yet. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the first time I've I've really gone into letter writing properly. Um, so I'm I'm not sure where you're getting that one from, Aya and Amira. Um, anyway, right. Um, a quick uh, quick reminder then. Uh, our word of the week. Type it in the comments if you can remember our word of the week this week, and in fact any of our previous words of the week as well. Um, and better yet, let me know if you can uh, either use them in a sentence or at least give a definition of them. So what we've got tangible there, that was last week's word of the week. We only introduced it on Friday, so it's kind of this week's word of the week as well. Um, and actually, I came across 
a good use of the word tangible just yesterday, actually. Um, so we've got tangible. Tenacious was the first week. Issa's got that one. And Freya was first in there with this week's one, which is trepidation. Uh, Freya, I know you've got you've written your words, uh, words of the week on the wall. I think that's fantastic. Freya has created her own little word of the week display that she's keeping in her room. Um, and I think that's a, that's a fantastic thing that, that you can uh, you, you could all do at home. So you could keep your own word of the week display. Um, in terms of tangible then, so um, I, I was watching, um, there, there, there's a show that I quite like. It, it, it's much too, uh, much too adult for you guys. It's called Better Call Saul. Uh, some of your parents might watch it. Uh, so ask your parents if, if, if they watch uh, they watch Better Call Saul. It's, it's very, very good. And if they don't, they probably should. Um, because it uh, for, for adults, certainly, I can't recommend it enough. little recommendation for the parents there. Uh, but I was watching a, a video about uh, one of the characters in it, uh, a lady called Kim Wexler. Uh, and she's she's very well acted. The actress that plays her is, is simply wonderful. And the, the commentator who, who was doing this video about this character said that she, she's a really tangible character. Uh, and I thought that was quite a good use of the word. Obviously, she isn't real. She's a, she's a character. She isn't real. But the way that the actress performs this character, she, she, she's so believable that it makes her quite tangible. So if someone... Uh, if someone is a very good actor or actress, uh, they make their characters very tangible. Um, so I thought that was that was quite a good use of the word there. Um, so it's it's a bit better than the uses that you guys were coming up with before, where it's like, well, this this table is tangible, this glass is tangible. You know, be that as it may, those things are tangible. We usually use it for things that almost aren't really real, aren't aren't touchable, but they're, they, they feel so real that it's like they're touchable. So you would talk about the evidence for something being tangible. You know, the, the theory of evolution um, or uh, the, the, the theory, uh, the, the Big Bang theory. All these things have a lot of tangible evidence. They have a lot of solid, good, strong evidence behind them. That in some cases, you could pick up the evidence. Um, but for the most part, it's just that it's, it's, it's really easy to picture. There's a lot of good evidence behind it. Um, anyway, guys, that is the word tangible, and uh, this week's word of the week is trepidation, which is basically just feeling nervous. So if you're feeling nervous about something, you're feeling a bit of trepidation, a bit of anxiety. Uh, so that's the word trepidation there. Um, okay, guys, right. So I'm going to swap screens just now to um, the Active Inspire screen here which will hopefully come up in just a minute although it's looking like it's not which is slightly annoying it just seems to be a blank screen is that it up now yes it is that's fine excellent um so for those of you that uh watched the video already this is the screen that was missing from uh fr from the solar system clock video um so it just had the learning intention on it so you're you're kind of learning two things you're you're learning about some of the differences between some of the planets in our solar system. And you're kind of learning how and why objects in the solar system have different lengths of day and year. So to be successful when you're doing this, when you're looking at the solar system and, and the, diff the movement of different objects in the solar system, to be successful, you should be able to explain what a day is. So what is a day in planetary terms? And that's actually one of the tasks. You have to write the answer to that. What is a day? Um, you also have to be able to explain what a year is. I actually say, what is a year? Um, in planetary terms. So the answer is not just 365 and a quarter days. Um, each planet is different. So what makes something a year? Uh, you should be able to explain why different planets have different lengths of day and year, and just generally compare some of the different features of different planets. Uh, and ultimately, you're going to be putting together a table that looks a bit like this. So you'll have the, the names of all the different planets, their day length, and their year length. So that's what you have to investigate today, okay? So that's what you're investigating today, the day length and the year length. Okay, guys, that's just a little bit about space. Now it's really about time that we get on to letter writing. So you did a little bit of letter writing on Monday. You were kind of thrown uh, straight into it. 
sorry, I'm just noticing a question. Mr. Green, can you do all of the extension tasks? You, mate, you can do what, uh, if you want to do more work, do more work. I, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't mind how much you do. So if you could investigate something else, uh, another aspect of it, uh, Freddie here is saying that he's doing temperature. Um, you know what, if you want to look into things like that, absolutely fine. If you want to do more work, more power to you. Um, anyway, mo moving on, we're looking at letter writing. So uh, you were thrown straight into it on, on Monday and you were all writing letters and so some of what you wrote was really, really good. But today, your job today is that you're doing a redraft. Now, I, we, we've talked a lot about redrafting. Redrafting is a really, really important skill, guys. A really important skill. And some of us still maybe don't quite get it. It is not, not, absolutely not, just a matter of writing out the same work again with neater handwriting. That ain't a redraft. Frankly, in this case, I don't care about your handwriting. I don't care if you write it again with neater handwriting. That's not the job. The job is to make sure that you are meeting all of the success criteria by the end of your redraft. Okay? Now, some people, uh, oh, no, I say some, a very select few, I would say, met the success criteria pretty much straight away, right from the start. So, well done if you're one of the people that did that. And I'm going to give one example uh, in, in just a minute of one that I, I think pretty much met the success criteria. However, some people, I'm not sure, really even read the success criteria completely to make sure that they were they were doing it all. So for reference, again, this is the success criteria on this screen here, right behind me. I don't know which side it is. Everything's back to front for me. But behind me, right now on the screen, is the success criteria. So you should be able to do the following things here. First of all, you need to have a greeting, and pretty much everyone did that. So uh, something like, Dear Max at the start, Dear Miss Lindsay, Dear Nathaniel, or Dear Liam, whatever. Uh, but that that's kind of your greeting at the start. And we're, we're keeping it fairly formal, so Dear would be, would be sufficient. I wouldn't normally, uh, although I would start a text or maybe an email with hi or hey, in a letter, I, I kind of feel that if you're writing something on paper, if you're typing it out and you're putting it in, in an envelope and you're sending it off, um, I really think that you should be sticking with dear. You know, keep, keep it a little bit formal. Um, you should use the correct structure, and this is where a lot of us fell down a little bit. Uh, the, it says here, address on the left. It should have the date, it should have the greeting. Now, the address of where you're sending it to should be on the left-hand side. A lot of us, an awful lot of us, put the address on the right-hand side. Um, that's where your address goes your own address, the return address, the address of the sender, that goes on the right-hand side. Um, but in terms of uh, in, in terms of the address of where you're sending it to, that actually goes on the left-hand side. You should have asked at least three questions. Now, it's important that, that doesn't come across as just listing your questions. You don't just want to say, I want to know the following things. One, how are you? Two, what do you get up to during the, you know, it should kind of flow as, as, as part of your, uh, as part of your uh, letter writing there. Um, if you're using, uh, sorry, I, I'm just reading the rest of the success criteria here. Uh, you should have used paragraphs when changing the subject. So if you're moving on to a new subject or you're asking a new question, uh, that, uh, that should become a new paragraph there. Okay. Uh, using connectives to help your letter flow. Again, more of us could be doing that. That is one that I would say is is kind of the challenge there. Um, and then lastly, using correct punctuation. I've noticed a lot of us missing out the punctuation there. Okay, so now I'm, I'm seeing a little bit of debate already coming up in, in the comments there. Um, the thing is, there are multiple ways of writing a letter correctly. Um, some people do move the, the address around a wee bit, but there's certain ways of doing it um, that are a bit more conventional than others. So if th this is a pretty standard layout here for a letter. So your address, the writer's address, would normally be at the top right here. 
Okay, so the top right for your address. The date, I've seen some people that put the date down here underneath the recipient's address. Um, more often it's up there, but the date sometimes does move around. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that anything that you've done is necessarily wrong. It's still a letter, guys. But in terms of keeping, keeping the structure, there are some things that are maybe more conventional than others, more usual than others. Um, so this is probably a fairly good process to follow here. Um, the place that you're sending it to, you want their name, their street, their town, their postcode on the left-hand side. Like it said in the success criteria, the success criteria does say on the left, and that's Miss Lindsay's success criteria. Um, if I go back to um, go back to the success criteria, oh, it's not coming up for me here. Um, that's Miss Lindsay's success criteria, and it does say address on the left. Um, and I think in the PowerPoint. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't remember, but that, certainly that's where I got this success criteria from. Um, let's go back again. Sorry, my computer's being really slow. Uh, you want to have a greeting, a polite greeting, introduction, which kind of ex you know explains a little bit about why you're writing, that sort of thing. Have a couple of points, and then at the end of the letter, if it was a formal letter, so that you guys weren't writing proper formal letters, but if you were writing a letter because it was a complaint or um, because uh, you you wanted something to happen, you were looking for a refund or compensation or apology, that's where that would go in the last letter. In the case of the kinds of letters you guys are writing, just a, a polite letter to a friend asking them how they've been getting on over this lockdown period. You might just say something about you're hoping to hear from them soon. You really hope that they're uh, that, that they're looking after themselves and that they're uh, not finding this too stressful. So that's kind of what I would do in the action paragraph um, in the case of a, a more just friendly letter. And then lastly, at the end, you might have a few different things. I know one of the one of the options that was given to you was yours truly. Personally, that's not one I, I tend to use much uh, myself. I know uh, Miss Lindsay uses that one quite a lot. Um, kind regards, I, I often use that one to sign off my emails. It's a bit more relaxed, a bit more lighthearted. If, it was, if I was still being very formal, but it was someone that I knew the name of, so if you know someone's name, uh, but you're still being formal, you use yours sincerely. So you guys are writing friendly letters, so you wouldn't use yours sincerely for that. It's a bit too formal. Uh, even if you know their name, I would say that, that you know that's for formal letters, but when you do know the name of the person you're addressing. If you don't know the name of the person that you're addressing, you would use yours faithfully. So that's for a formal letter, but when you're not really on, on a named basis with the person, and then you would put your name. So for my mates, I'd write something like, kind regards, Max. If it was someone that I knew by name, it would be yours sincerely, Mr. Green or Max Green. Um, and then if it was someone I didn't know, it'd be yours faithfully, Mr. Green or Max Green. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do now, guys, let me just have a quick look at the, uh, at, at the comments. And yeah, we, we've got um, Nathaniel here saying that he just did from because I did an informal letter. It's absolutely fine, mate. You know, you, for, for the sort of letter that you're writing from, that's fine. Um, just making sure that I've got, yeah, there's no, no real comments there that I need to address. So let's move on then. And we're going to look at a couple of examples. Now this first one, I've blocked out, uh, it might not come up very clearly because um, the photo that this person has taken, um, or, or maybe the pencil that they wrote with, it, it's really quite pale. That's not their, not your fault at all, pal. This is a very well written letter. Uh, whoever did it, I, I, I know who it was, and you probably know who it was as well. But I've taken names out. Um, but uh, a couple of things here. So they've got an address. I'm not sure if this is their own address. Obviously, I've taken out uh, some personal details here. I'm not sure if this is your your address, the writer's address, or the address of the person that it's going to. But if it's the person that it's going to, uh, this address should really be on this side. Again, not always. You can play around with letters a little bit. Um, but usually this section here would be reserved for your address. And above the dear part here would be their address. 
the date I would say is in a good place. This is really good. Um, and we've got a good introduction, dear whoever. Um, let's read it out here. We've got good use of apostrophe. Uh, it keeps it quite informal. If you're using apostrophes, that keeps it a bit more relaxed. You would avoid using apostrophes in a formal piece. You wouldn't say I'm, you'd say I am in a formal piece, but in informal, it's good. Uh, I'm writing to you to tell you uh, how my daily routine progresses throughout the day. Um, okay, so we've got um, how basically what they're doing on on their day-to-day -day basis and this first paragraph is saying why they're writing and that's a good way to start you should say what, you know what's the point of this letter now, if we look at our structure here uh, the introduction it, it should kind of explain why you're writing what the point is um so you're explaining your daily routine i think part of this could be uh you've used good vocabulary um routine is r-o-u-t I-N-E, um, but don't worry about that that too much. I think this the, the wording of this could just be tweaked just a little bit there. Um, oh, I'm seeing in the comments people are, uh, pe uh, people are saying who it is. Let's try and protect some anonymity here, guys, okay? Um, although, I mean, if, if it's yours and you feel, feel happy to say, yep, that's mine, I'm proud of it, by all means, no, no worries. Uh, first of all, I wake up and get dressed. After I get dressed... I come downstairs and eat my breakfast. I also go upstairs to brush my teeth and hair. I am now ready to start homeschool. Um, I hope I hope those uh, inverted commas aren't are, aren't meant to be an insult. It's, it's homeschool. You know what I mean. Um, so this paragraph here, uh, it, it's doing its job fairly well. Uh, it's just sort of listing the activities. Uh, the first couple of days, it was very different. Sorry if I'm, you know, you're probably getting a good shot of my forehead here because I'm going quite close to read it. Uh, it. It was very different because my friends aren't there. I would say it was different because my friends weren't there. Uh, and my teacher, brackets Mr. Green, is not there or maybe was not there because you've started, because you've started off in the past tense, you should kind of be keeping it in the past tense. Um... Yeah, it is very odd. Maybe a little bit relaxing. Uh, sorry, not relaxing. A little bit informal there. A little bit colloquial, uh, we could say. But it's all right. Uh, very odd. Um, uh, full stop. I get my work on Teams Microsoft. Uh, I'm not... Uh, is this... I log in and start... It's a little bit pale for me to see there, so I can't quite follow that part. Um, but I think this last sentence here could do with a wee bit of work. Now, why am I doing this at the moment? Um, I, I should probably make that uh, make this clear. The point of this, obviously I'm not going to sit here and do this for everyone's piece of work. Okay. Um, the point of this is to show you what you guys have to do today. So you see how I'm reading it. First of all, I'm reading it out loud. Okay, I'm reading it out loud. I'm thinking, does this make sense when I say it again outside, uh, out loud? Don't get me wrong. This is a very good letter. This, this is a well-written letter. And I'd say it, it, it was one of the better ones. And it has met most of the success criteria. So this person that did this one, well done to you. Um, however, even though it's a very good letter, it ain't quite perfect. There's little bits that just could be rephrased a little bit. Uh, it could just be tweaked, smoothed out a little bit, um, and just make uh, make it flow that little bit better. Okay, um, so that's that's a really good example, and you guys need to be doing that today. So the point is that you're redrafting and improving it in the process of redrafting. Okay, um, but we've got good details. Uh, it's signed off in quite quite a nice way here. We've got a few questions. Um, it is a bit listy, the questions. Um, so you've kind of built in, you've just done the questions as a block at the end. I'm wondering, could you kind of build one question into each paragraph? Um, you know, if you're talking a little bit about um, what you do in the mornings, at some point in that paragraph, you could ask, what's your morning routine like? Um, I, I see at the end here, you've done uh, a little bit about, about ping pong. I'm guessing that's a hobby of this person that you're writing to. Could you maybe write about one of your hobbies and how you're how you're feeling about your hobbies? And then 
in the in that paragraph, ask them about their hobbies. Just a better way of doing it rather than just having a list of questions at the end. Not that, you know, a, a list will work. It will work. I'm just saying that you kind of have a bit more of a flow, a bit more of a meandering route through the uh, through, through the letter if you build in questions. Hopefully that kind of makes sense, guys. So all of you can be trying to build in like one question per paragraph as long as it's relevant to the paragraph. Okay, here's another one. Now, unfortunately, this photo's a little bit blurry, um, but uh, this one was quite a good one as well. But the key that I'm making here is it's really important to read your work out loud. If you read it out loud, then you'll probably notice uh, some 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 of the things that haven't been written quite perfectly. So, dear whoever, uh, I hope you guys are doing well. I just wanted to ask how you get on with your work during quarantine. In return, I will tell you about my experience of being homeschooled. Okay, good introductory paragraph here. I would say I just want uh, I just wanted to ask you how you get on with your work during quarantine. I'd maybe say how you are getting on. So keep it a sort of continuous thing. I just wanted to ask how you're getting on with your work during quarantine instead of how you get on. Um, I have been learning for the past month and three days a week. My teacher live streams on YouTube and he does meetings in Microsoft Teams with our reading groups. Okay, so quite a long sentence there. I'd say that you could chunk that up. So uh, not, not so much paragraphing, uh, sentence structure is really, really important here. A lot of us need to be thinking about where we're putting things like full stops. So we've got three facts in this part here, and a lot of you will have done things like this. So we've got a fact about they've been uh, th this person has been learning at home for the past month. They've got three days a week, their teacher live streams on YouTube. And they've got that they've got meetings on Teams. So we've got one that's kind of about him, the person that's writing. And we've got one part that's about their teacher and what goes on when they're learning. So what I would say, just to improve this, I have been learning for the past month. I'd say something like I've been learning at home for the past month. And I would put a full stop there. I'd take out the and and I'd start a new sentence. Ooh. Oh, that's not letting me do that. Start a new sentence with a capital. Three days a week, my teacher live streams on YouTube and he does meetings on Microsoft Teams with our reading groups. To start my work, I log into an app called Microsoft Teams, comma, good use of comma there, that's really good, uh, where I find tasks set for the day. Full stop, good use. So we've got good use of punctuation now. It was just this initial sentence here that the punctuation isn't, isn't quite perfect. Then when I finish my work, I take a picture of my work. I maybe just say, take a picture of it rather than my work again. So you could simplify that actually, because we know that you're talking about your work. I take a picture of it. Uh, then I post. Uh, then I post it on Teams. Full stop. Sometimes I can get. Uh, I sorry. Sometimes I can do my work in peace, but when I can't work in peace comma, should be a comma there. So again, make sure we're all thinking about things like full stops, commas, even semicolons. Um, when I can't do my work, it's because my brother is distracting me. Naughty brother, you shouldn't be distracting. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well in quarantine, yours truly. So some good stuff here. Punctuation needs a wee bit of work. Going back to the success criteria, in this case, we've got a dear whoever, We've got overall, have we, have we got the correct structure in this one? Not really. So we, we should really have the address here. So this is a return address at the primary school. That's good. That's in the right place, the return address. But we should have the place that it's going to here. Okay. So that's really where that should go. Um, have we got three questions? I don't think we have three questions. We've got some paragraph use. I think it could be chunked up a wee bit more. Um, we've got a little bit about how they get work at the start and then a little bit about how they actually find doing their work. I would chunk this up into two paragraphs myself. Um, and punctuation we've talked about. Connectives, one or two of them could help there. I'm just going to look at one more letter and then we're going to finish up. Um, I'm just going to check back at the comments. Hopefully I've not missed too much. 
Right, let's try and not have uh, too much banter going on here. Is Mr. Green loading on anyone else's screen? Am I, uh, am I freezing for people? Hopefully you can see me wave, Sky. Um, anyway, we've got uh, we've got just one more to go through, uh, and I'm going to have to do this one quite quick because we're already half an hour in, and I'm due to meet the Parvana's Journey group in just nine minutes. So this last one I'm going to have to do quickly. The main point of this next one is uh, just for you to think about full stops. I'm sure full stops was kind of the issue with this one. So we've got an address uh, that is going to somewhere in Melbourne, Australia. That should really probably be over this side here. Okay, uh, we've got the date, which is good. A little bit crammed in here, but I know you're trying to save space in your jotter, so that's fine. Uh, dear whoever, uh, I hope you're all right during COVID-19. I have found homeschooling a little bit hard at times. Have you? So I'd say there needs to be a full stop there. Okay, a little bit hard at times. So that's a full statement. And so we need a capital letter there. Have you? Question mark. What have you been doing in your spare time? I have to say, I find homeschooling a little bit harder as well, pal. I'm uh, finding it hard to do my job as well as I could do in school. Um, right, I, uh, so how are you spending your, what have you been doing in your spare time? Well, because you've said what you're doing in your spare time in the next paragraph, I would say that this whole section here could actually start as part of this paragraph here, because this is about what you're doing in your spare time. I have been editing vids on my uh, on my phone through iMovie. Punctuation, that's a statement, so it needs a full stop. Capital letter. You should download it if you haven't. Haven't is a contraction, it's have not. They need to go together, so we need an apostrophe there. Okay. Um, I have been trying new things. Again, that's a statement, so full stop. So really think about your paragraphs. Where are the clauses? Where are the individual statements? And you need to be thinking about uh, where the where the punctuation needs to go. Uh, I put a Harry Bow in water, and it grew because of the gelatin. That's quite cool, actually. I didn't I didn't know that that happens. I suppose it would, but let's all try that. Get some Harry Bow, stick it in water, see what happens. I'm guessing you have to leave it for a while. Um, punctuation again, capital H here. Hope you have had. Uh, some entertaining days, full stop, capital I. It was nice uh, talking to you. You could do a full stop or maybe a semicolon there. Uh, it was nice talking to you or you weren't talking. I'd maybe say writing to you. Hope to hear from you soon. Kind regards, whoever. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Lovely. N a nice wee uh, flourish on the end there. Um, so overall... That's meeting the success criteria fairly well, but punctuation uh, needs a wee bit of work. And the one thing I would say, guys, and th this is kind of a next step for many of us here, is try to weave your questions in uh, through the uh, through the writing process. Okay. Anyway, guys, um, I'm about to sign off just now because we are meeting at ten forty for the Parvana's Journey Group to ans answer Sky's question. There, ten forty, we're going to be meeting, so that you've got about five minutes to get a drink, or uh, you know wh whatever you need to do, um, and then uh, we'll meet up. We'll just have a wee chat about things, uh, and then at eleven, I'm going to meet the Windscape Group. Okay. Anyway, guys, signing off just now. Um, take care of yourselves, look after one another, and uh, yeah, I will speak to you all on Friday. Uh, cheers, guys. All the best.